Welcome to the U.S. Open Health Desk presented by Mount Sinai. I'm Mara Montalbano and today I'm joined by Dr. Peter Shearer, Medical Director of the Mount Sinai Hospital Emergency Department. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Mara. And today's episode focuses on some issues players might experience playing in the heat. And it's been hot this week, Doctor. It's been, it's been very hot. And, you know, certainly as the heat starts, temperature starts going up, your body then is absorbing a lot of that heat and from the sunlight. And then you, if you're a sportsman, if you're one of the athletes out there, you're generating a lot more internal heat and just building up that core body temperature that your body then has to somehow dissipate. And the main way that your body dissipates temperature is through sweating and evaporation. So it seems like hydrating is the most important factor to preventing heat illness, is it? Right. So certainly hydrating is the most important thing and it's hydrating before, during and after. Um, so you want to make sure it's not just drinking while you're doing the exercise, but making sure that you're well hydrated beforehand. And so even if you're just a, you know, if you're not a U.S. Open athlete, but even a lay athlete and you know it's going to be a hot day, you want to make sure that you're drinking a lot of water early on. Um, people also make a big deal about different sports drinks and drinking those sort of things to replenish the electrolytes you may lose. But it's also important that those, those drinks have you know, a fair amount of sugar. The sugar is actually important because it helps your body absorb more of the water. We don't want to have too much sugar. What causes cramping and what's the best way to treat that? So most cramping is probably related to the loss of the electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium, um, which again gets to that making sure that you're drinking some sports drinks at some time, not necessarily all the time, but to bring back some of those electrolytes. And if you do suffer, suffer cramping, the best thing to do is stop the sport that you're doing, stop the exercising, do some passive stretching of the muscles, make sure you're staying hydrated, replete some of those electrolytes. And what role can clothing play in regulating body temperature? The clothing will help you, can really help you dissipate a lot of the temperature, a lot of the extra body heat. And if you're wearing the light colored clothing, it might keep you from absorbing some extra heat. If it's loose fitting, it will allow some air to flow through which will help again with some convection and dissipating some heat. And then there's the, the fabric. So if it's a fabric that is a, a natural wicking type of clothing or some sort of a, a tech fiber that wicks it away, it'll help your body with that evaporation process. Uh, better than say cotton, which will absorb a lot of the water and sort of just let it cling to your body. Going back to the water and hydrating, I mean, should the water be at a certain temperature? Is ice water best, warm water? Yeah, I mean, colder water will definitely help your, your body stay cooler. So you can definitely, by drinking cooler water, it will help some of the core temperature stay down a little bit. But probably the most important thing is making sure that you're drinking a good enough quantity. And you'll know that you're well hydrated because um, you'll be feeling better. And you'll notice that when you urinate, your urine will be a little clearer, not so much of a dark dark color. What's the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke? Heat exhaustion is when you're really getting a lot of um, dehydration going along with the heat. Your body's working hard to keep the temperature down, you're sweating a lot but you're losing a lot of water and then you start to feel the effects of the dehydration and probably a little bit of the rise in temperature. So you'll start to feel dizzy, lightheaded, uh, maybe you'll start getting a little bit nauseous. So that's heat exhaustion. Heat stroke is taken to an extreme and your body can no longer regulate the body temperature. So your body temperature starts to rise. So we'll go from 98 degrees Fahrenheit up to 103, 104, even higher, 106, 107 degrees, and your body can't regulate it anymore. So you'll stop sweating. So instead of having perspiring and feeling cold and clammy, your skin will be dry, flushed, people get very disoriented, you can have seizures, and then you can have some, a lot of the other effects on body organs like kidney failure and such. Well, we definitely want to prevent any of that from here right. at the U.S. Open. Thank you so much, Doctor, for all of that great advice. Sure. And don't forget to check back at usopen.org throughout the tournament for more great information from the staff of Mount Sinai, right here on the U.S. Open Health Desk, presented by Mount Sinai.